Welcome back to the News Hub here at WSJ Live. I'm Simon Constable. Why the Antarctic may be teeming with life way below the ice. Dr. Robert DeSalle, molecular biologist and curator of the Natural History Museum here in New York City, joins us now on the set. Thank you very much. You've uh, just ridden down Manhattan on your bicycle, <laughs> yeah. and we, 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 we love that. So the discoveries have been made uh, below the ice in, in a lake that's below the ice, which right. I find very weird because if it's below there, how can it be a lake? But it's, it's interesting. It's a big discovery, right? Tell us about it. It's quite a big discovery. Uh, what the researchers did was they uh, cored through the ice down about 4,000 feet, pulled up a couple of cores, and then um, analyzed the bacteria, the microbes that lived in, in the ice. Uh, and what they found was a lot of brand new things, so a lot of brand new species of bacteria and uh, very significant kinds of findings. So what does this tell us about Antarctica? Does it tell us that once upon a time, it wasn't a frozen wasteland. I mean, is, is that is that basically was it what is it like, was it like Britain or green and stuff? Well, we know from ge geological mm. evidence and how the continents drift that uh, Antarctica was at one time habitable by large large animals and and a lot uh, nicer climate than what it is is now. Um, but these bacteria give us uh, an idea as to the kinds of uh, microbes that lived uh, when Antarctica was uh, uh, habitable. Uh, and also, indeed, uh, the kinds of microbes that can live in, in ice, too. So uh, it's a very, very uh, interesting set of organisms that they, these guys have so uh, things that We know as, as the, the planets get further away from the sun, they get colder, and if there's water, there will be ice. Does that tell us something about what can live on you know, other planets? Y yes, indeed. And I think the, that uh, uh, an organization like NASA would be very, mm. very interested in these results because it tells us that some organisms can adapt to very, very cold environments. Uh, and can adapt to very, very extreme environments. And the fact that these guys have found uh, microbes living in, in kind of an abundance uh, is, is fairly significant. Now, it, it, it is significant. It's also very hard to do science in Antarctica on account of it. It's cold and it, it's remote. There aren't really roads. Um, was this, is this just like really, really brutal? If you're a scientist and you're there, is this like the worst place to work? It, 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 it is a very difficult place. I, I've never been there. I, I, I usually don't even make it out of the lab. I, I don't make it south of Houston. Well, you made it Houston. out of the lab for us, so we're very grateful. <laughs> I don't make it south of Houston most of the time. So, so th these guys really uh, are, are st uh, strong-willed researchers, mm. and, and to go and get these cores is very, very difficult. Um, and to, to have the foresight to think that there were interesting things in it is even more, more interesting. Okay. Now, is, if, if you were a young scientist now, would you say that that is like the, uh, if you're staying on planet Earth, that's the final frontier, that, that's where you can go and make some really great discoveries and maybe get yourself a Nobel Prize? I, I think actually the microbial world is where uh, all of the new discoveries are going to be made. Um, even, even the microbes that live in us and on us, around us, uh, in this office, uh, all of the, the uh, microbes that we, that we know on this planet are a very, very small number, and there are millions of them, tens of millions, if not mm. hundreds of millions, different species. And that's where the really interesting things are going to be. And then the super interesting things are going to be in the Antarctic and the Arctic and really, really extreme environments like the Antarctic and the so Arctic. So the, basically saying the microbes that can withstand the really cold environment. That's right. right. Or, or they can stand, uh, withstand really, really hot, hot environments like in warm hot springs or uh, in uh, thermal vents in the bottom of the ocean and places like that. Finding the, the microbial diversity that lives there is going to be really a lot of fun. Well, there you have it, Dr. Robert LaSalle of the American Museum of Natural History. Thank we you. appreciate Thank your you time. Sam.